Hello, in this video I am going to show you destructors in classes. If you haven't taken a look at the constructor video and the simple class example video, I highly recommend that you take a look at them. Once you're done, feel free to pop them back. So the destructor is the last method that is run by the class. Unlike the constructor, which is the first method that's run by the class. So in the constructor, you generally set things up. In the destructor, if there's any sort of, let's say, memory or any anything that needs to that you need to handle, maybe you want to inform the user about something, maybe you want to store some data in a database, whatever it is, you do that in the destructor. That's the last method that gets called before your object gets destroyed. In our example, because all we got is a main, the scope of these objects will end as soon as they hit this end sub which is the end of the application so once it's all finished done running it'll call the destructor to implement the destructor you just use the keyword protected just bear with me for now about public and protected i've got a separate video that covers scope and you know what public protected is so feel free to check that out protected overrides so you need to override the initial destructor and just put finalize. So finalize is the actual destructor name and it is a sub the way the constructor is. And in here you can do whatever you want. You can maybe save something to a database, <laughs> email somebody, you know, whatever. I'm just going to simply write it out to the console. So console.write line and I'm going to say this is the end and if I run it as you can see it says this is the end right here the reason it says it twice is because we have two car objects C1 and C2 and as soon as it hits the end sub these cease to exist and as a result it calls the destructor for each object and it says this is the end as an extra task what I actually want you to do is find a way to distinguish which destructor is being called for which object. One way that you could do it is create a variable, let's say as a string, and that could be the name of the car, have a different name for each car, which you manually set yourself. And in the destructor, so in this sub, you say this is the end for, then you print out the car's name as well. So you can see that they are separate destructors that are being called for each object. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next programming tutorial.